All right, what we have here is the Motorola Atrix for AT&T. It's actually called the Atrix 4G. And it just arrived about five minutes ago. And it is Monday around 1.30. And I'm going to open this thing up because I'm excited and I want to try it out. So let's get started here. All right, what we have here is a little packaging here, a little bubble packaging. And this is the phone itself. So let me put that to the side. And inside the box, I've got a couple packaging slips. And I have a card here, which is a quick start guide printed with soy ink. So it's very environmental of them. Uh, let's put all this to the side and get to the meat of this, which is actually the phone itself. Okay, here's the box, and I can't wait to see my new phone here. Do some unboxing here. All right, it says, Welcome to AT&T. In case you're not familiar here, I am switching from T-Mobile to AT&T. So I'm just reading up here. It says, Welcome to AT&T. Thank you for purchasing a Motorola Atrix 4G. To get the most from your new smartphone, check out AT&T.com wireless tutorials. Be sure to select Manufacturer Motorola and Model Motorola Atrix 4G from the drop-down menus. And in here we have a quick start guide and the phone itself. It's already got the SIM card installed and it has this little texting and driving it can wait sticker on there. It's very thin. It's very cool. So you can see that there. I'm going to show you in my next video I'm going to show you how it stacks up next to my Nexus One phone. But it seems like it's uh, pretty light, and of course the battery's not in yet, and uh, it's a good size. So let's put this to the side, and this is just a piece of cardboard here that it was in. All right, what we have here is the back of the phone. We'll put that on in a second. You get the charger brick here, the USB cord for the charger or if you want to plug it into your computer. And then you get a mini HDMI here. So that's really cool. HDMI to mini HDMI basically. And then this is the battery here. It's 1880 milliamps here. So it's a little cold but I'm gonna put that in there and charge it up. And then the remainder in here is just a little couple of pieces of paper here. Turn this over. To use this device, you will need a Moto Blur account. You can create one when you first turn on your phone. Please enter your existing valid email address and choose a password. You'll need them later, so make a note. I had no idea that you needed a Moto Blur account for Moto Blur. I've never used a skinned Android device before. Well, I've actually tried them before at like a mobile phone store, but I've never owned one. I owned the G1 Day 1, and that was stock Android. And then I bought the Nexus 1 Day 1, and that's also stock Android. And I really was uh, pretty much a stock Android kind of person until the Nexus 1 never got the 2.3 update the gingerbread update. And supposedly it was supposed to get it in December. That's really my only gripe with Android is that you don't get the updates. I mean, I did. I got the update from 2.1 to 2.2 this summer on the Nexus One, which was at the time the Google anointed phone. But now that the Nexus S is out, I don't know if they've forgotten about the Nexus One. But that's one of the main reasons I moved over. But we'll get into that later. This little piece here is uh, start connecting and then you got another booklet here, safety and regulatory information. I wonder who actually ever reads something like that. And then amazing apps to keep you entertained. So some suggestions for apps. 
which include Weather and Wikimobile, Tetris, eBay, Pac-Man, things of that nature. So that is what is in the box. Let us take a quick tour around the phone real quick. Let me put the back on the phone. I'm actually not going to put the battery on quite yet because I'm going to do that when I turn it on. I just want to do a quick tour on the phone here before I turn it on. Remember, this is just an unboxing video here so you can see what's in the box. On the front, you have your front-facing camera, your mic here for your ear, then you have your headphone jack, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top here. Um, obviously the 4-inch screen here, which is QHD, which is quarter HD, which is one of the best resolutions you can get on an Android phone. You have your menu, home, back, and search buttons here, the capacitive buttons down here. The one thing I'm going to miss on my Nexus One is that it had a little trackball. This does not, so it's going to be interesting to see how that works. But this is such a high-powered phone that I don't care. Um, let's pull this off here, if you can hear that, for the first time being pulled off. This is the phone here, and I assume this is Gorilla Glass on top here. And it's very light. Of course, I don't have the battery in yet, but uh, that's what the front of the phone looks like. And it's a good size. Now we're going to go to the left side of the phone. Now, if I would have gotten any of the docks, this is where it would plug in. You have a uh, HDMI, and then you have the USB here. You have the two ports on the side here. And there are no covers or anything. They're just wide open like that. I didn't get any of the docks because... I thought they're a little overpriced, basically. I thought that the laptop dock, I know it's new technology, and whenever something's brand new, it's more expensive, so I understand that, and Motorola wants to make some money on that, so I, I understand that too. But the laptop dock is basically a screen and a battery, and some electronics inside of there, but there's no CPU in there, there's nothing other than that, it's just a shell basically to plug this phone into and it's a five hundred dollar dock on its own if I would have gotten it with this it would have been three hundred dollars on top of that and I think that's just a little too pricey I think it's just a little ridiculous I would have gotten it had I not had a Chrome OS notebook a regular laptop and later on this week I will be getting the Motorola Zoom tablet so for my money I just didn't think it was worth buying the laptop dock, although I think it's the coolest thing and I would love to get it maybe sometime down the line when it comes down in price a little bit. Also the regular dock where you can just dock it and use it as a desktop, attach, attach it to a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. I thought that was also a very cool idea, but for $130 I didn't think it was necessary. It also comes with a remote if you put a lot of media on your phone and you want to watch it on your TV, that's cool. So that is probably the dock I might be getting, the $130 dock, which comes with, with the remote. But I just thought it wasn't necessary at this time, and I can always get that sometime down the line. Let's switch to the right side now. You'll see your volume rocker here, up and down volume. And the top of the phone is where your power button is. And this power button, we'll get to it in a second, but it also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. And like I said on the top, the, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The bottom of the phone, there's nothing on the bottom here. Okay. Now the back of the phone, I'm going to pull this off in a second, but uh, you have your camera, which is a 5 megapixel camera, and it has an LED flash here. It actually looks like there are two LEDs there, which is good. And you have what looks to be a noise cancellation mic here. And you have your speaker down here for speakerphone, and I would imagine your media that you play. And down here is your actual mic for when you speak on the phone here. Okay. Uh, on the back, like I said, you have your power button here, which you push in, or you can use it as your uh, fingerprint scanner, so you would swipe your fingerprint on there in case you want to use that for security reasons, which I think I'll be using at some time down the line. Now I'm going to peel this off. Basically it just tells you how to power up and lock and unlock your phone. Press to hold for the power and you can 
like I said, use a fingerprint scanner on it. Then down here to remove the battery door, you, I guess, do it from the top first and then pull it down. But I'll just keep this, this sticker so I can reference it later, but I want to peel it off so you can take a look at the back of the device here. Back of the device, it's a plastic, you can hear that, a plastic back here with the AT&T branding and the Moto Blur branding here, and it's sort of got a carbon fiber look to it, which is kind of cool. Very nice, sleek looking phone, and I can't wait to power it up because this thing is a beast. So check out my other videos that I'm going to have that I'm going to do on this device. I'm going to do several of them, and I will see you on my next video.